English wise, I'm curious, what do you think was harder on this test for English, the vocabulary or the grammar? Between the vocabulary or the grammar? No, yeah. the grammar was very straightforward, I would say. They were using non-essential clauses that were very evident, even if you weren't familiar, for example, with the use of a dash, right? Something that I've been discussing with my students. If you have two dashes, it's very obvious. Here is something that maybe is non-essential, right? But when you use one of them, it becomes, uh, it has a different purpose. So it kind of like gives you a side note or a little bit of explanations. The text that they had wasn't that long or complicated to identify what kind of punctuation marks we needed. I think the transition words were also maybe one question in the English uh, part that was between two options at one point. Uh, but in general, the, the grammar, I think that it wasn't that hard as I was expecting. Um, the vocabulary wasn't that crazy also because I've seen some questions in, if I remember correctly, maybe in the test number seven and eight, which there was one question with four pretty much new words for everyone that was taking that test. So in this case, the vocabulary was a little more friendly. I don't think that that's going to happen all the time, right? Maybe in the future it's going to become a little more complicated, but the vocabulary wasn't that intense. Uh, the part that was definitely more complicated to me was in the second module, the um, purpose of the text or what is the main idea of this text and the text was maybe about a scientific passage. I think that the scientific passages are in a trend right now and they are using those kind of elaborated reports or kind of look like looking like an essay and it's not super easy to read so my advice will be to take some notes here and there just to identify what is the focus of the overall text yeah those science ones are definitely the hardest in my opinion too and i think aside from annotating that's a great strategy like the, the big names and terms that they throw out, i find that students have it trips them up and breaks their flow when they're trying to pronounce like scientific nomenclature so i always just say just use the initials like call it bi and keep yeah. going right Aside from those two things, is there anything else you can think of or that you recommend to your students for science reading passages? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's a, a really good point. And that's something that I do also in my annotations. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that the notes are, helps you more instead of writing that much to put maybe the initial of the species of the bird and they put that in the Latin name, right? So I just put PC, for example. And if the population goes up, PC, arrow going up and that's it. Right. And I understand what, what am I writing because I'm reading and at the same time I'm writing my own notes on the scratch paper. Right. Yeah. I like the, the idea of the shorthand because it saves a lot of time. And I feel like for the science, it's a lot of correlations. Like, is this a negative correlation? Yeah. Is this a positive correlation? So it's very easy to see the relationship because that's what they're really testing us on. If you have an up arrow and a down arrow, yes. you know what I mean? They give you those cases and then how these effect of this passage of the text will affect the population. So those are the little details you want to annotate because once that you annotate, it makes more sense. If you yeah. just read it, and at the end, of course, they're going to mention one of the tricky names that they started with. You have to go back and then you lose track of the information that you were gathering and collecting. Right.